Hello, my lovelies. It's Christmas hair wreath day. Um, yeah, so basically what this is, this is Elizabethan hair taping. Before we get started, yes, I already have a video up on Elizabethan hair taping from years ago. However, it was totally not in high def and now we have lights and things. So, yeah, this is Elizabethan hair taping with a very jingle bell motif. We're going to sew some jingle bells down in it. Now, a couple of caveats. If your hair is super slippery, uh, what you actually would want to do is uh, look for my faux crown braid video. Um, if I remember, I'll put an annotation or I'll link to it below because I know annotations do not seem to work on mobile. So um, yeah, that will probably do better for you because uh, you have something to grip on. Um, or you can always do the practical hair taping version, which starts with two pigtails, um, you know, French or Dutch braided. I usually say Dutch. There's more to grip in a Dutch braid. Um, and then you can do your wreath. Now, we are going to go classic style because my hair has enough grip that it stays. Uh, and all my curly girls, you totally don't have to do any prep work other than this because your curly hair will definitely stay. Okay, so what we're doing is uh, we're going to put our hair in a low pony. We're going to make two rope braids. We're going to wrap them around our head and then we're going to sew them down. Um, this is all we're doing. So, I mean, if you don't need to see that, then why are you here? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So anyway, why am I doing it this way instead of one of the more secure ways? The big reason is the center of the wreath. Uh, now, a faux crown takes care of that, so you still get fairly smooth in the middle that kind of goes like this. Um, and the practical hair taping, while it will stay and not move, uh, however, you have a big line right down the center, which I just don't find aesthetically pleasing when I'm trying to do a wreath. So we're doing it this way so that the center of our wreath is beautiful and smooth. You guys know me. You know that I have got this weird compulsion with smoothness. Um, although I have been trying, you guys, to embrace softer, less smooth. I just, I like the smooth. I just, I like it. So uh, yeah, you're going to start with a low pony low pony. This is going to be the bottom of our wreath. Uh, you don't really have to worry, uh, especially since we're doing a wreath, about your ponytail holder showing because we're going to cover it up. I have a big bow for it. Um, yeah, so I am not going to worry. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I'm making a wreath today and I have tons and tons of stuff to put in it to make it super tacky, but I'm actually not going to do that. Uh, I was going to put lights in it. I'm not going to. You can. You can totally put lights in this. Um, I thought about putting my little packages in it. Uh, these little things I made. These are little Christmas ornaments that I wired to you pins, but I'm not going to. The only thing I am using for mine today is thin green ribbon. Um, some jingle bells, uh, and a bow. Uh, the bow is made out of uh, flannel wired ribbon, and then I sewed it to a clippy. So I made a bow uh, for the bottom of my wreath, um, and you're going to need one of these. This is a yarn needle, um, sweater needle. Uh, you sew your sleeves on your sweaters with this. Uh, the ribbon. How much ribbon you need? Uh, mine is pre-cut uh, because it's the one I use every Christmas so I already know it's the right. But what I usually do is just do an arm, two arms, three arms, and that's about it. Three arm lengths for my hair to go all the way around. All right, uh, so yeah, da, da, da. You do not have to use rope braids. You can absolutely make this with English braids, four strand braids, five strand, whatever, 
strands you want to do. I like rope braids. You guys know this, especially because they are, since they are only two strands, are the most malleable. So I'm going to make mine. I'm going to rope braid down as far as I possibly can and then attach um, or secure the ends with clear hair ties because they hide best. So I'll be back after I get that portion finished. Um, and just in case, I know I just rolled my eyes. I'm sorry, ladies. Um, in case this is your first video and you don't know how to rope braid, which why would this be your first video? You're, you've already changed the channel because I talk too much. Um, rope braid. Twist your hair away from your face, like so. Yes, you see how we're all twisted, okay? Now wrap towards your face. While you wrap, twist, like this. Wrap to the right, twist to the left. Wrap to the right, twist to the left. This is, and then you see, it makes a rope. There you go. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'll be back in a Alrighty. second. Alrighty, so we have two rope braids stemming from one ponytail. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna take them and wrap them around our head. <laughs> I know, I'm making this sound so silly. Uh, I think it's just because we've done this one. This is an old, old one. I do like to tighten them up though. Um, it just makes me happier. So then as we wrap, I'm gonna go ahead and use some clippies just to hold them in place for now. Um, we will move the clippies when I wrap the other side around. I like splitting this in two um, because I think it makes it look uniform all the way around. As you guys know, like when we do a coronet braid, um, which is, you know, we just do one English braid down the back and then um, I am going to pin this down. I can always remove this pin later. Um, yeah, I mean, you have a you have a thick side and a thin side because, you know, your hair tapers. Um, and, and if you have like a major taper, which I know some of you guys do because you're rocking the fairy tale ends, um, it looks weird because half of it is real thick and then it gets real skinny. So it looks a little odd. This keeps that from happening because it's the same on both sides. Um, so yeah, we've got that one just tacked down for the moment with some clippies and I'm going to go around the other way. Um, I'm going to go in front just because that's how I have it set up. <laughs> We're going to sew them together so it's no big whoop. Um, and when I come through this way, I am going to do this. Do you see my fingers? I'm going to take this like this. Let me tighten this up a little bit. Tighten you up, de -de -de. and I'm going to go over the top and pull this down and then hide this under here like so. And technically, we should be almost totally covering that. But like I said, I'm putting a bow there, so I'm not super worried about it. I am going to uh, clip this here like so. Uh, we remove these clippies after the fact. Um, I think that's good enough for now. Let me just have a look, see, make sure everything looks kosher. Um, yeah, we look fine. Yeah, I could have done a better job hiding that, but like I said, not worried. Okay, so now we sew. Uh, before you sew, go ahead and get your jingle bells out. Uh, I think I'm going to use silver um, instead of gold, just because my hair is yellow, blonde, what have you. How many jingle bells you want is up to you. I just like the fact that there are jingle bells. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That sounds good to me. All right, so now, take an end of your ribbon. Hello. Um, thread it through your needle. I usually leave about a hand like this, right? I'm gonna go ahead and go right behind my ponytail holder. Um, pull this down like this, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull it all the way through to leave this hanging down uh, about that much. Go back to my needle. 
thread the other end through, and then we're going to sew. Um, we're just going to sew this braid to our hair. Um, so since we have this coming over top, we're going to scoop around like so. So let's see. We'll start right here. And you just scoop some hair on your scalp. You bring it up. You pull it through. Now your first, um, your first one, don't pull too tightly. Don't worry, we can tighten it up later. Just because you don't want to pull this. We need this. You don't want to pull this all the way through. Then we are just going to sew our hair. Now what I'm going to do is two rounds. That was one. This will be two, and now I'm going to put a jingle bell on. Oh, I hope these are big enough. Oh, they might just be a tiny bit too small. I had real, ah, oh, darn it. Okay, well, my needle is slightly big, but that's okay. It'll just be a little more complicated. Hopefully your jingle bells have a better thing. I'm just going to. I'll thread it through this way and then re-thread my needle. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to go two swipes per, so no big whoop. Um, so we'll get our bell up there. Ding, ding, ding. And then two more rounds. Um, when I get up here to the second, I'm going to work on getting that end tucked a little bit better. Move you to the outside so we can see you. So we have one on the bell, so that's one, this, well, but actually that's a bell one. So this is one, we're going to do a second one, and then we're going to add a bell. Um, and then they should be fairly evenly spaced, I think. Um, or do you guys think we should do every, nah, not every other. We'll do two and a bell. That seems good to me. So two, and then we add a bell. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sew all the way around my head, doing this. Two loops, a bell loop, two loops, a bell loop, two loops, a bell loop. Then, once I get it all sewn down, I'll come back and show you how we tighten and finish. Alrighty. Alright, we're at the end. I actually only ended up using six instead of eight jingle bells. Although, I could have used more if I did like every other one instead of every third, whatever. Any hoodles. So, this was our last. We just take this needle away. We take our other piece like so. Now you can tighten it up. Um, I usually just tighten a bow. So I literally just tighten it up till it feels good and secure and then I make a bow. It makes it really easy for takedown if it's just a standard bow and it will stay. There's no reason why it wouldn't. It's not brushing against anything. Isn't that lovely? Let me make sure everything looks kosher back there. It looks pretty good. We're a little thick on the bottom. It was a little loose back there. But, like I said, since we're doing a wreath, I get to add a bow. So, let me add my bow. Um, I do have to look in the mirror for this. Just so I can try and get it where I want it. Well, I need both hands so I can get it centered. <laughs> Let's see. I get some hair to attach this to. That feels right. Dee, dee, dee. Dee, dee, dee. Yeah. Now I have a wreath. Um, you can use thicker ribbon. Like if you have a better needle than I have, you know, with a bigger eye. Um, by all means, you can use a thicker ribbon. Um, I like that it jingles because I like the sound of jingle bells and I am a big goober. Um, yeah, but that's it. I mean, that's how you do a wreath. But as you can see, like, it's smooth here. It's nice and smooth. Whereas your other options, you either get hair going this way or it's split in half. But you are the only person who knows if your hair will stay like this. Um, I can sew my hair in this fashion and it will stay for days. Um, but you know, eventually it does slide a little, 
um, on your head. Uh, I know especially my girls with really silky hair, theirs tends to slide. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to. I think it does kind of go into how you sew um, your hair in. Like for example, like I try and do mine all kind of going in an upwards motion. I go this direction and then when I start going down, I sort of, yeah. So if you sew it on a slant, like you don't want to sew straight up and down like this. Um, you want to sew slightly slanted. I think it helps grip better. Um, but if you do have really, really slippery hair, even that might not help. So you probably want to go, um, if you do at least want smooth in the middle, you want to go with the uh, faux crown that I did. That I think will work really well um, because half, you bring all the hair to one side and do a Dutch braid and then you have something for it to grip. Um, but this is my preferred method because my hair will stay sewn. So this is my preferred method for the hair wreath because it is the fastest and easiest. Um, and I do like that it's smooth. That's me. Um, like I said, if you want to add extra decorations, add extra decorations. You can add some of these little bu buggers, you know, add some presents. You can put lights, especially if you have the good lights I told you about, which are available on Amazon. Um, with the wee tiny battery pack. Um, yeah, if you want to add lights, add lights. Um, I think if I had had red or green lights, I probably would have put in lights, but since they were blue and I was going for a red and green motif, um, I opted for no lights. But, yeah, there's your Christmas hair wreath. This is probably how I'm going to wear my hair on Christmas, just because it gets everything up and out of the way. It's festive. It's really comfortable because it disperses all the weight around your head. And you do it, and then you don't have to do it. Um, and if you do it without the bells, you can sleep in this and get up the next day and still have festive hair, if you so desire. Okay, that's it for me today. Uh, Merry Christmas, guys. I don't know if we're going to have a video tomorrow because I think it's when we're heading out. So, um, it might be a little spotty. Uh, and I will be in the WV for a few days and uh, trying to upload anything on that internet connection is scary at best, but if you stay tuned to my Instagram um, or Twitter or Facebook, I usually take whatever on Instagram and then cross post. So if you're there somewhere, I might put up a few little short vids from Instagram of the puppies or whatever. So um, yeah, um, but I'll see you. I'll see you next week at some point, <laughs> and then we will do more whatever torn feels like, which isn't that. Okay, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, uh, Blessed Yule, all that good stuff. Okay, love you guys. Bye!